What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I thought this would be a ton of fun to do this. A lot of you ask for shorter length videos, and I thought with the limited time that I have with 7% left on my phone, I thought we have about five minutes of film time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a lightning round. I'm gonna share with you five tips in hopefully five minutes or less. Challenge accepted, let's go. So the first tip I wanna give you guys is with harvesting onions. If your onions are falling over, they're ready to harvest. If they're still standing up, they're not. A lot of people harvest their onions too soon, but if your necks are soft, they're ready to harvest. All right, and that's because the necks are so soft, they can't stand up, and once they crimp, they, uh, well, they pretty much stop growing. All right, next tip is with tomatoes. If your tomatoes are cracking, the first thing that I want you guys to do is to water a little more frequently. That's because when the tomatoes actually expand really quickly, they haven't had enough water in their system and the skins expand too fast and end up cracking. But if you water a little more frequently, that actually helps the skin to stay hydrated so it stays elastic and that's gonna reduce cracking. Now come over this way really quick with our cucumbers. So the cucumbers are starting to show signs of some spotting. This is actually known as powdery mildew. A simple solution for this is to mix up about two tablespoons to a gallon of water and spray down the crops. If you have powdery mildew, that's gonna create a pH imbalance. You see the powdery mildew is actually a soil borne fungus that lands on the leaves. And if you can change the pH of the leaf, it'll actually help to, uh, to alter the pH so much that it's not hospitable for the powdery mildew. That happens when nights are cool and damp. One way you can also help reduce the powdery mildew is not by watering at night. Water in the morning so the, uh, so the, so the leaves have a chance to dry out so they're not staying damp too long. All right, let's keep moving. All right, coming over here, we've got our Brussels sprouts. Now the Brussels sprouts need to be plucked. What you see here are these lower leaves. A lot of people don't get large Brussels sprouts because of the fact that they don't pluck their lower leaves. It is super important to do this about three to four weeks into, uh, basically into their, uh, the bulb, like the uh, floret formation. I don't really know what they're called, but when the Brussels sprouts are starting to turn into little mini Brussels sprouts, you wanna do this about three to four weeks in because it allows them to continue to expand. It actually allows energy to be focused on growing the Brussels sprouts. And then one additional little tip that I can give you guys is take off the head. By taking off the head, that's gonna reroute more energy into these little, uh, these little bulbules here. That's gonna form more Brussels sprouts. And you typically don't wanna harvest any more than about 50% of those. And that's gonna help them to mature. All right, one more, let's go. So coming over here, this is dill. Now this dill is going to seed and a lot of people worry about their dill becoming super invasive and completely taking over their garden. What you wanna do is you wanna catch your dill at this stage right here, just before the seeds start to drop. Because dill is a very important uh, herb in the, in, the, um, in the kitchen and dill seed is something you can use for the whole winter. But unfortunately, it's hard to get dill seed without having it end up all over your garden. There's one quick little tip I can give you guys, and that's by capturing it before it drops. And you'll notice that if you take your fingers and give a pull, it won't come off. That's the time you wanna harvest your dill seed and then basically take the whole plant, take the whole plant just like that and dry it upside down. Some seeds are falling off, but if you catch it a little bit early, you can dry it upside down for up to two weeks. Then uh, you can basically shake off all the seeds and then that's when they'll fall off because the plant can still mature even though it's being pulled out of the ground without maturing in the garden, dropping all the seeds everywhere. So there you go, there are five garden tips in less than five minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helps you grow bigger, go home. If you did enjoy, make sure to throw a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you guys later. Bye.